I want to be the very best, like no one ever was. Bam, 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 and explain them is my true test, and science is my cause. Pokeball, let's put this childhood conundrum to bed. How do Pokeballs really work? I've seen this question asked everywhere, answered in as many ways as there are Pokemon. Some explanations are less sciencey, like auras or life energy. Some are more hard science concepts like matter to energy conversion. But I want to go in a completely different direction. Let's start with what we know. I'll be honest, after Pokemon Red and Blue came out, my Poke fandom sort of dropped off. However, the method of Pokemon capture and release appears unchanged even today, with what looks like energy beams enveloping Pokemon, reducing them to energy, and containing them inside Pokeballs. The fan theories on how this process works are vague, but I think there is a middle ground somewhere in between energy, physics, and miniaturization that we can work with. You teach me, and... I'll teach you. Could Pokemon be stored as raw energy inside Pokeballs? While it's true that matter is energy, E is equal to M C squared after all. The problem with actually expressing this relationship is that it is an explosive one. Literally, explosive. Take Pikachu. It has a mass of six kilograms. Now, if you converted all of Pika Pika into raw energy, a Pokeball would have to somehow contain twice the energy of the largest nuclear device ever detonated, Sarbamba and it had enough energy to equal 500,000 trillion joules. That is a lot of energy, more than some Voltorb-looking metal thing with mirrors and an energy source inside it could contain. But I think there's another way, one that works with the people for the ethical treatment of Pokemon. pet 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 both the Pokemon anime and the manga have little clues to suggest that Pokemon themselves don't exist in some Star Trek-style energy pattern inside these cold metal Pokeballs. Although this data theory of Pokemon storage does make sense when you consider how Pokemon are transferred as information via Bill's PC. The problem is that both the data theory and the physical size theory imply terrible, cramped living conditions for our pocket monsters. The alternative, what fans call the ideal environment theory, where Pokemon are miniaturized and inhabit perfect habitats that make them happy, is much more ideal. Kyle used, here's how it might work. You never touch anything. The atoms in your hand, for example, have electrons circling around them that repel the electrons of other surfaces, meaning that they never actually touch, which is why the atoms of your hand don't just go through a wall when you touch it, for example. You've heard that atoms are mostly empty space, right? Well, it's true. If you could bring electrons down closer to the atoms that they encircle, it would utilize that empty space and thus shrink the distance between the atoms in an object, thus shrinking the object that those atoms make up. To keep an electron's energy the same, but decrease its Bohr radius, as it's called, its mass must increase. Amazingly, we are actually working on experiments that do just that in our super colliders, changing electrons into their heavier cousins, muons. One day, this could be the start of some kind of shrink particle beam ray inside of a Pokeball made by Sylphscope Pokemon reference? So if a Pokeball could emit a beam of particles that altered the mass of the electrons of a Pokemon, it could feasibly shrink it down to inhabit one of these ideal environments inside of a Pokeball and make us happy about its living conditions. Of course, there are problems with shrinking down to this size if you're a Snorlax. Density comes to mind, you'd fall right through the earth. But hey, it's better than using a Master Ball on Mewtwo and accidentally obliterating Cerulean City with the same amount of energy that the sun hits the entire earth with every minute. And you gotta catch them all. Why? Because ass!
Want more science? Check out my last video on how the Terminator skin stays on. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos if you want, because science two days earlier than anyone else, head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.